Now, still a little bit more background that's remaining. So, you know, again, it may not be very clear. What does the strategist do? Or, you know, uh, who is the strategist? Uh, so let's look at um, what Copper Mobile does, okay? So think about it, like Copper Mobile, you know, we solve complex business problems using innovative mobile solutions, but what does that mean? I mean, we build apps, right? We build apps, but um, the right way of saying that is that we build solutions because people don't buy apps, people buy solutions. People have problems and they buy solutions to their problems. They want solution, okay? And that's what they hire us for. So the right way or the right marketing way of saying that is that people buy solutions. So what do we do in, in our business? So, you know, we start with marketing, then we go to sales and then delivery. So that doesn't mean that there are no other functions at Copper Mobile, but these are the key functions at Copper Mobile. So what does that mean? That means that marketing is initially, I mean, if you want to start the life cycle of the customer by that, you know, we tell stories, we come up with stories, uh, we do some sort of outreach, we send, uh, you know, some uh, emails out, we do some cold calling, uh, you know, we even do some paid advertising, we have our website, we have word of mouth. So it all begins with someone, um, you know, in our department, sending out that communication or building that website or, you know, doing some paid campaign where we say, hey, if you have a problem, we can solve it using mobile. If you have a field team and you're struggling with getting, you know, the status from them on an immediate basis, or if you have too much of that paper-based process, so we would write those articles to come across as the authority in that field, in the field of mobile, and that's how um, you know our marketing department works. So, um, so how do we begin with? We begin with some sort of outreach by storytelling, and that's that function of marketing that we have. From there, we produce what's called, within marketing, we produce what's called a marketing qualified lead. That's the MQL. Sorry for that acronym, but uh, pretty common in uh, our industry. So MQL is marketing qualified lead. So what happens when we get a marketing qualified lead? That means that, you know what? I am in touch with the CIO. I have the in, uh, attention of that CIO or the CTO uh, of a large company, or, you know, it could be VP engineering. It could be, um, you know, the CEO himself. So we have the attention of that person, but we don't know what project exactly we are going to be working on. So that's, you know, a marketing qualified lead. So what do we need to do if we have a marketing qualified lead? We need to nurture it, meaning we can't do hardball selling and be like, hey, you know what, can you buy a mobile app from us? Hey, we do all these services, would you like to buy? No, that doesn't work. So that's not what we wanna do. What we wanna do is just ask them, hey, is there a challenge that we can help you with? We wanna ask them, um, you know, we wanna just nurture that relationship. You know, we wanna send them an article, hey, Mr. Prospect, uh, I found this article really helpful, or Mr. Prospect, we uh, did a blog on you know, what is important, what are six, six steps to uh, developing uh, an amazing mobile application. So those are some of the things that will just, you know, stay top of mind, we'll send them a LinkedIn invite, you know, we'll post an article, we'll send a message every now and then. So that's what marketing does. They engage people, they tell stories. If we do an amazing project where it's helping the community or helping a customer, we'll come up with a story, we'll come up with a case study and we'll send that over to you know our social media, to our customers, to people who've signed up in the newsletter. So that's one function that we do at Copper Mobile. I can say that that's sort of the beginning of that life cycle for uh, a Copper Mobile customer or a prospect, okay? From there, once let's say, you know, um, someone says, oh, I keep seeing these articles from Copper Mobile and you know, it looks like they're pretty good at developing enterprise applications. They're really good at, uh, you know, developing mobile applications. So I need a mobile app or I want to investigate if I could use a mobile application for my workforce to do X, Y, and Z. So in that scenario, they'll be like, okay, well, let me reach out to them. So in that case, they will either reply to one of the emails or to one of the social media posts, or maybe they'll go to the website and they'll fill out a form. 
that, okay, I want to talk to an expert to discuss how much does it cost to develop, you know, such and such mobile application. That's usually the main question that everybody has. How much does it cost? You know, and they don't want to tell you what is it, Mr. Customer, what do you want? But no, well, I'll tell you that, but how much does it cost? So, you know, that's, uh, we'll, in our sales course, we go over how to answer some of that question, uh, but we're going to be covering a lot of that here as well. So once you have SQL, which is a uh, sales qualified lead, that's when we start our five-step process. In that five-step process, we do an introduction meeting, we get their requirements, we go to the solution presentation, we give them the pricing, and then we do the contract negotiation. So that's the function of sales. Once we've done marketing, we got them MQL, we nurture that lead, uh, it comes to bottom of the funnel. Funnels like on the top, there are all the prospects that could be your um, you know, customer, and then they're at the top, so you have to get them to the bottom of the funnel. Imagine a funnel, and then on that funnel, on the top, there are a bunch of leads that you're just nurturing, and it comes down the funnel, and it becomes a sales qualified lead. The moment you know, that okay there's a specific opportunity a specific app that they want to do that becomes uh, a, a sales opportunity a sales qualified lead so marketing is usually responsible for giving that sales qualified lead to the salespeople and the moment the salespeople get that lead you know we like to jump on it and uh, we immediately want to call the person who has a specific idea we want to do a quick introduction we want to set up a requirement meeting where we have a subject matter expert and then we want to do a solution presentation that's our way of coming back to them with you know this is what we understand and you know all of the other good stuff that they want to know like regurgitating the requirements giving them the timeline the um, the project plan uh, assumptions so once they say yes to that, then we give them the pricing and then we finally do the contract negotiation. So those are the first two elements of what Copper Mobile does. And then what happens when we get the signed contract? Okay, so when we get the signed contract, that's when we send it off to delivery. That doesn't mean that the salesperson does not get involved. That means that we basically have some sort of a handoff. So the salesperson, because most of the people at Copper Mobile were consultative sales, and you know we try to be there on that initial meeting as well to you know um, transfer that knowledge over to the delivery team. You know we encourage the customer to just you know say it again because we want to hear from them, their passion, their vision. But sometimes you know you want to make sure that the team knows exactly what uh, what they're building before they come into the kickoff meeting. So there are these things that we do once we sign up a customer. So there is discovery. That's what we do. And we'll cover that in this specific session and we'll have more details on, um, we'll, we'll cover what we do in discovery in this session, but we would uh, go over uh, how we do discovery in our next session. Uh, within discovery, we have our after discovery, we have design which kind of goes hand in hand. So we make that as a phase of discovery and design and you know strategies included in all that. And I'll, I'll, I'll tie that all together as well. So within design, which is a part of this course, we do process flow, wireframe, storyboard, and then we do architecture, which is the architecture of the overall application. Then we get the development team involved. We do development, so like actual coding, that iOS application, Android application, or the backend that we may have. And then we get the QA involved. So QA, make sure that whatever the requirements were, it matches exactly. And then we help the customer in deployment. And then finally, when the app is live, we help them in support as well. Okay, so this is our delivery team. As you see, all of these people. So who else is on the project? There's a project manager, and there's a training going on for that. That person is also a business analyst, um, you know, like very similar because they have similar roles. They come up with user stories, requirements. Then we have the UI UX designer. Usually we have that as one person um, where, um, you know, one person meaning like one specific role. So UI UX designer is another role in delivery. Then we have iPhone developer, we have strategist, we have QA, we have Android developer, we have um, you know, another UI UX designer, I guess. So these are all the different roles that are important for delivering the application. And where, where do people who aspire 
um, you know, to get this training and learn from it and get a job, they fit in. They fit in in either a strategist or a UX designer. I mean, based on this session. But of course, our goal is to also be able to impart those skills, cultivate those skills of a UI designer. And that's what we're uh, going to do throughout this course.